And so what we've done so far is to set up our profile, looked at a lot of settings and such, and then I've touched on, deliberately, just touched on the actual posts and such here, because what you post, the actual content, overlaps a lot in Facebook with the other networks you post to. Of course they have their own style and identity, like maybe that Instagram photo won't work as well on Pinterest, or maybe this link that you post on Facebook won't work as well on Twitter. They all have their own character, yes, but it's about the content. We took a lot of time to talk about the various settings, but really what we need to come back to the concept is that with Facebook, because it is the 800-pound gorilla that owns the playground, we play by, those, by their rules or we don't play. And it is perfectly viable to not use Facebook in any of your social media endeavors. You can be perfectly fine on any other network. Uh, one of our clients who uh, designs jewelry barely set up a Facebook account maybe two weeks ago. She was resist resistant. She was running everything on Instagram and that worked really well for her. So much so, so much so that Vogue magazine from the, the, the Mexican version of Vogue magazine has contacted her to feature her jewelry. So that's a big deal. And she did it all through being a superstar on Instagram. Um, she just recently opened the Facebook just to get a little bit more exposure. <clears throat> so there's those two sides of that coin. Facebook can potentially reach a lot of audience. And the great thing about Facebook is there's, there's so many people on Facebook. Uh, but the bad thing about Facebook is there's just so many people on Facebook. And the thing is that you're going to be a needle in a haystack. Uh, so, we posted some content. What's the big secret? What's, what content should I post? Really, in the beginning, you're gonna need to, you're gonna need to take the shotgun approach in the beginning for all the networks. You're gonna need to post a variety of things, different kinds of pictures, different kinds of videos. Maybe you never even thought of videos. You should think about video. So, different kinds of pictures. By that I mean like the content maybe some in black and white, I don't know. You need to vary it. You need to uh, experiment. Pictures, video, links, articles, short articles, long articles. You just need to vary it. And I haven't touched on it, and I won't really get into it, but you can figure out what are events and milestones. But you're gonna post a bunch of content, like a shotgun. You're gonna shoot, you're gonna shoot wide. As you get activity, eventually you will have a brand new tab, Insights. You don't have it now because no one knows your page exists, especially if you created it today. Eventually you'll have Insights, and just a very quick look here, you're gonna see all of this data about how many likes you got, what were your most effective posts, this is what's then gonna let you then get the sniper rifle. So to use weaponry terms, shotguns, we're gonna start with shotguns and end with sniper rifles. The shotgun will hit everyone, a sniper rifle will kill or hit one person. <laughs> so here you're going to, I put in a bunch of kinds of posts, some links and some pictures, different kinds of pictures varying the amount of text. And I'm seeing at a glance here my most recent posts, this one had the most activity. It reached the most people, so we have nearly 200 likes on this page, and it reached a quarter of that. Uh, it reached 18 there, 24 there. So when you get insights, you will be able to see what kind of post did you post? If you did any targeting, who did you share it with? How many of those did it reach? And then engagement, which would be clicks and likes and comments. So this one about um, this one about this blog post reached more people, most likely from a combination of the graphic and the text. And then some amount of them actually clicked the link. Some of them liked the post itself. And this is how you're going to then specialize. This is how you're going to then know, well, what's effective for my audience? What does my audience care about? You're going to look at the insights. All of the networks give you some form of insights or statistics nowadays. Uh, Facebook's one is very powerful and 
and full featured and in, and Twitter has one. I I don't think I mentioned it in class. I apologize. Did I mention the Twitter analytics screen? Okay. Quick, quick digression. Just write down this address and look at it on your own. Um, analytics twitter.com once you get activity on anal on Twitter you will then see this screen full of data these charts that show you your most popular tweets and your audiences and all of that stuff to help you then understand are my tweets reaching the right people so and so Twitter has a tool to view your statistics analytics.twitter.com we're currently looking at it on Facebook, but you won't have it until you've got activity. You're going to see a brand new insights icon at the top. Um, we looked at Google Plus. Uh, we mentioned it on Google Plus. It's when you're on your on on your on your business page from the menu. You select business page, and it'll show you right there insights. You might not have noticed it because you had no insights on Google Plus. If you haven't logged in recently, log in and go to your go to your business page link and you should see some insights. We'll look at, uh, next week on Pinterest and we'll see Pinterest has insights too. They may call them different names, analytics, insights, statistics, data, whatever. But this is telling us what's effective. So I can then decide I'm going to post more of these and less of these. I can go in deeply and see, well, where did my likes come from on what days what was effective who did I reach and on what days and all of that I'm seeing here it's about a 60 40 split male to female and then the larger demographic is 35 to 44 so maybe I set that I'm trying to reach you know 20 to 30 year olds and I will be skewed toward that audience, but I'm still going to get the, uh, the ability for anyone to see my page. So it's still a good idea to see here and, and see, are we aligning what we're trying to do with what is resulting? So if I'm actually seeing my results are going more towards this age range, I want to go back to that screen to change my targets and actually focus a little bit more on those screens again. I mean, on those demographics. Do I not have access to that because I just started the page? Yes. So here I'm seeing U.S. Most of the fans come there. Half of them come from Mexico. Very few then it quickly tapers off from the U.K. San Diego, most people, some from Mexico City, Tijuana, and then it tapers languages, English and Spanish, and then it goes off to Portuguese. So once you actually have activity, likes and all of that then you'll see an insights tab you can export all of this to Excel and further make notes and devise plans and such now on on our topic of our page, well, I posted some stuff. I'm going to do the shotgun approach in the beginning, post a bunch of different types of things. As I start to get those insights, I can then switch to the sniper rifle and put in the more targeted content. Uh, that still, though, doesn't negate the fact that the uh, Facebook algorithm changes. The, the technique that Facebook uses to show your content to people and all of these networks are free for people to use, but they have they usually have a paid aspect for companies. So for companies to reach the right audience, to reach more of an audience. And yes, it is highly cynical, but very true. That isn't it ironic that in order to reach the most people on Facebook, you have to pay for it. Huh. But it's true. Because they change the algorithm. They change the rules of the game. And either you don't like those rules, don't use Facebook, or you live with the rules. I still don't like the rules, but I live with the rules. And now what it is is we'll, we'll shift our discussion then to the pay aspect of Facebook. Because honestly, you will be able to reach some audience doing it completely free. 
but you will be able to reach a faster, a bigger audience, faster paying. And you can pay as little as one dollar, and that'll like reach five times more people than you would have done it without paying. Obviously, if you pay ten dollars, twenty dollars, a thousand dollars, you'll reach even more people. That's how you can always see those ads and that content from the big companies. They're spending a thousand dollars a week on Facebook to reach you, and you may ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. But you out of you are out of you are one out of one billion users of Facebook, so they do find an audience, even though a lot of people might ignore. For us, we, we can't see that it is very that it will be very useful. So there's two, uh, there's about three different ways to create ads in Facebook. So again, I'm not saying you have to do this, but I'm going to show you this because it's a disservice to talk about Facebook without talking about ads. And yes, it might sound morally wrong. I'm not going to pay to use Facebook. Well, as a business, you should probably pay for those business cards and pay for the ads in the newspaper and pay for radio spots and all of that and pay for social media to reach more of a targeted audience. So one of the d most direct ways that we can do this, because this can honestly be a little complicated, actually before I'm going to do that, um, let's do this. Let's go to um, socialmediaexaminer.com and there's a perfect article that's right on the home page that I want you to look at. Go to socialmediaexaminer.com and we'll scroll down a little bit. There's an article about changes to the Facebook Ads Manager. Let's see, it's the fourth article from September 21st. In most of my classes, or on all of my classes for this college, there's no homework, there's no grades, there's no certificate and such. You get out of these classes what you want, what you put into it. You're going to learn something to apply it. So getting an A in this class is not going to be as valuable as getting new customers. right? So there's no homework, but here's your homework. You're going to read this article. And then you're going to write a 10-page paper. No, you're just going to read the article and understand what it's about and maybe use it because this is a big topic ads in Facebook and this article that I looked at a moment ago it's very detailed very good I would go in here and educate yourself more about it because some people would want to do this the paying for Facebook and some people don't and both ways will work but the paying will work faster and it can be complicated notice this article is a bit long because it's got pictures and such. But you want to look at this and it'll tell you step by step. I'm going to show you one aspect of this. This is the more complex one, creating whole ad campaigns. I'm going to show you one simpler aspect that you can do pretty quickly. So make sure you read that article. But on our page here, I'm going to post content. I might have five followers. Maybe one sees it. Maybe zero see it. I don't know what the algorithm dictates. But on each post, after or before I post it, you have boost post. That's the nice way to say, pay for more people to see it. And we have that button to boost the post before we post it or after. I recommend to boost the post after you post it because you're sort of in limbo when you're writing the post and before you publish it and you go to boost it, something could happen. You could reset your, your you could refresh your web browser and you lost all of the that you had crafted and you have to write it again. So I recommend write your post, publish it, and then boost it. Because then it's it's out there, it's real. It won't disappear if you refresh your screen, and it could disappear at the moment that you're trying to write it and about to boost it. Excuse me, why Oh, that's a good point. Uh, what kind of post did you post? Just garbage. Maybe they don't want garbage to be promoted. <laughs> I've never had that. Um, I've seen it on your screen, mm -hmm. but I have not had that on my screen yet. It might also be, we'll probably have to look at it during the break in your particular purpose, but it might be maybe, did you just 
did you just create a personal page today or did you already have a personal one? I just created it today. So if you created everything today, it might be so new that they don't trust just yet to do boosting. So maybe just use it a little bit more, a few more days, come back and it might be boostable. So let's say I wanted to show, to have one of these, like this post, I want to show this to more people. Even if I have one follower, I can still suddenly now reach a hundred real followers, real potential followers. So I'll, I'll look at this. Um, this requires a, a debit or credit card or a PayPal account. So if I click boost post, I've already got a card set up, so it already has, it, it gives me the full access. But if you don't have a card set up, it will ask you before you can proceed. But basically, on the boost post, this one post will be targeted to more people. Um, this is how it would look like on people's desktops or mobile devices. I have a way to then create a target audience. I don't like that it automatically shows, that it automatically selects my last target audience. And I know for myself I'm jumping between different target audiences, so it's a little annoying. I have to jump, jump between different ones. Uh, but basically, uh, ignore what this is for a moment. I'm going to create an, ar an audience. And again, I don't like that it's automatically filled in. I want a new audience. Why is it filling in the defaults that I had previously? Let me just clean all of this out. But this should look familiar. It again looks like the, the, the audience demographic screen that we've chosen previously. It's very, very similar to that. So I can't believe there's no, you know, reset button. Okay, so I've got create an audience, select the location, age, gender, and interests of people you want to reach. So very similar to the previous one, but this this is uh, related to the ads. Uh, so let's say uh, this article right here it would be perfect for writers or bloggers. So I'm just going to call this blogger audience. Maybe I'm targeting people that are first-time bloggers. So this this is this is a ta for them. It doesn't matter how I spell it because audience because uh, this is just internal. So I can go with audience of location, country, cities. So this time, yeah, I'm going to do a country of the U.S. What ages? The youngest you have to be, according to the rules of Facebook, is 13. So I can't target any kids younger than 13. And then I go up higher than that. So let's say I'm going to have a very broad age group, but I don't know. This might not be very useful for 14-year-olds. Interests. So the same thing. 4 to 10 interests. I start typing keywords here like, let's say, WordPress. That's a very popular blogging platform. I select an I select an interest, a keyword, and then it's going to start recommending other related ones. WordPress.com works, Blogger works, these others maybe not, like MySpace. So let's say tips, tipsy bartender, tips music, beauty tips, computer tips and tricks. Mm, maybe, so I can select that. If I don't like it, remove it. Uh, how to. Okay, so it says 4 to 10. I've got 4. Question? How do you know it's out there and you paid your 5 bucks and have enough pay for the actual video? We will be able to, to log into our uh, ads manager screen and it will show you all of it actually happening and who is it reaching and how effective it's being. Okay, so I've got an audience, and then asks for a budget, and the estimated people reached. Well, that's a very small audience. Not really. 840 to 2,000 people for $5. That does not mean that you will suddenly get 2,000 likes or 2,000 sales. That does not mean you will get 5 likes or 5 sales. 
really the dirty secret about all of this marketing, whether it is social media or that ad on the freeway, is you're not going to convince as many people as you want or as you think to follow through. You're going to see that ad on the highway every day for six months and you're never going to deal with it. And maybe four people in San Diego do. Well, they got four sales. You're going to reach potentially 2,000 people, but maybe seven actually buy your product in the end. Uh, that's just a fact of all of this marketing. And yes, some are much more effective, like Apple or Samsung. They spend a certain amount of marketing and it pays off, and they have billions of dollars in revenue. It's almost, in a sense, magic and science and art. Marketing. Yes? So what is the 2,100,000? Is that all the people that fit that mm -hmm. um, within the United States? Fit those yes. whatever interests? This whole audience, oh, okay. U.S. age interest. So all of that is potentially those two million. Okay. So yeah, out of two million, I can I'm barely going to reach two thousand. But that's still I've got one like. That's that's still really good. And if you spent more money, you'd get more people that they reach. Ah, I get it. Yeah. Yes. So I made a post, and I want to boost its promotion. Mm-hmm. So strangers are going to see it mm -hmm. as an ad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to try to reach more of an audience. Strangers, new customers, definitely. Uh, I'm going to try to reach people that would care about this. And this is what the whole point of this is that I'm going to pay some amount to really show it to the people that would care about it, potentially 840 to 2000 for $5. And that could then result in more sales. This whole thing about reaching an audience is just half of the puzzle. The other half is what are you sharing? If you're only sharing a picture, that's a bit of a dead end. I included a picture and the link because the actual article is what I want people to read. The article is, is what I want them to read and subscribe to and comment on. So if I had just posted a picture without a real, you know, follow through, okay, 2,000 people saw it and clicked liked on my picture, and they never went to my website. So when you add these boosted posts, you should still have some link that goes somewhere. And the more savvy Facebook ad managers mix it up. It's not always about buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. Sometimes it's just for the sake of getting more followers, because that snowballs. More followers could get you more, fo more followers. More likes could get you more likes, because Facebook will still show your page when it says, if you like this page, you might like that page. So I still want to, for the sake of more followers, a captive audience, once in a while, put just a dead-end picture that really inspires someone, that makes someone chuckle, and pay one dollar. It doesn't list it here. But you can pay one dollar. It's only going to reach 160 people. That's still 160 people for one dollar. And I could get maybe 10 likes out of that. 20, 40, I don't know. We will see the effectiveness in the insights screen. And that is coupled with what are you actually sharing? Do people care enough to like it? Yeah. So you said that they receive an ad. That means that they aren't getting it in their news feed or whatever. They're getting it somewhere else so it actually looks like a little advertisement. It's yes and no. It will put it on... It could put it on the side where we've all trained ourselves to not even look. And it will put it in the middle of your content, but it will be marked as sponsored. Okay. So it's not so intrusive. But it's going to look like sponsored. And some of them will appear, you know, unintrusively and they'll be ignored. And some will appear intrusively and will be ignored. And some will be clicked on when they're on the edge. And some will be clicked on when they're in the timeline. And again, to be cynical, perhaps you will reach more of an audience when you pay more. And you pay the dollar to Facebook or each person that... You're paying it to Facebook. You're you're putting uh, you're putting you're giving the money to Facebook and then Facebook in a sense is spending it to reach the right person. 
So what we're paying and, Facebook. And that's per click, the dollar. Is you paying a dollar to Facebook per click? It doesn't quite show it here, actually. Sometimes it's not a dollar per click. Sometimes it's 20 cents, and sometimes it's $3. But you're not actually paying them for clicking. It's just showing how much you um, are, the value you've gotten from that $5. Is that correct? Like if you have 100 of the 5,000 people click, you're not paying $100 to Facebook. No, you're paying, right. in this case, $30. Right, and then it just breaks that down. 30 divided by 100, that means it's 30 cents a click. Around there. I'm sure they also tweak the formula that it's not so specific because I'm sure they might show that these ads also because, again, I'm reaching a target audience. So it's not going to be 5,000 random people. It's going to show it to these ones that are interested in that interest and this interest and that interest. So some of those might be more valuable. Some are worth 30 cents a click and some are worth 20 cents a click. And that can all be broken down into our insights panel but it really is about setting a budget. We don't set a per click, um, you know. I guess it's on the promote website uh, tag that it opens up and it confused me too because it gives you a daily budget box and then underneath it says estimated for five dollars, estimated 18 to 34 clicks per day. Yeah, I'm not gonna quite mention that if you're on something else. I'm on the boosted post because like I'm saying this article over here that's the one that really goes into detail about how all of this works, which is complicated. So if you're on a different screen than mine, we can look at it during the, the lab. But I'm focusing on the boosted post, because as I said earlier, this one's going to be perhaps the most direct one to work with as a beginner. The one that you're looking at might be too complex to think about as a beginner. So I'll just deal with boosted for a moment. Question? Um, they boost it, they send it out once. No, they're going to send it out enough times until your budget runs out. <coughs> so if I had put here $30, I can say show this for one day, 14 days, and here it's going to spend about $2 per day until the budget runs out. So it's going to send that out multiple times to the right people. So let's say I'm just going to use $1. For one dollar, I need at least fourteen dollars because it needs to spend one dollar per day, not per click per day. So this could be a way to to get an audience relatively quickly. Spend one dollar <coughs> per day, you know, budget a twenty dollar bill to start to get you activity early on. And again, you might be morally objecting to this about well, I can use Twitter for free. I can use Pinterest for free. Yes, you can use Facebook for free. But really, Facebook has changed things in a way that the, that the boosting posts and creating ads and such will be more effective, like in the real world. You can have the guy standing on the corner spinning that sign. But really, how effective is that than actually getting that coupon in the mail? Because you have that physical coupon there that reminds you to go, to go buy, whereas you're going to drive by that every day and you're not perhaps going to pay attention unless he really spins it nicely. <laughs> So it's all a big art and science and magic marketing. There's a little advanced thing here I don't quite have time to get into called a conversion pixel. But there's going to be links, uh, maybe not here, but on another screen. What this is, this is again the other dirty secret. People see that billboard on the screen, but how do you really know that that billboard caused that person to walk into that store? There's no way to know that unless there's some kind of uh, um, trigger or some kind of like proof. Because what if that billboard says, come to the Main Street shop and say the secret word, happy? Well then, when someone comes to the shop, they use the secret word happy and it and it gets put into the order and the database, then me as the owner can look back and say, oh, 40 people use the word happy. Now I know that 40 people saw that particular billboard. Online, we have something similar. We can have an embedded pixel, a little dot that follows a person, a cookie, basically, that follows a person to show that, yes, they saw the ad, <coughs> they clicked the link, and they went to the website then at the website did they actually follow through and buy the product? Well, that's kind of on you now. Facebook can really say, we got them to your website. 
If your website was buggy and broken and didn't buy anything, we don't care. You paid $100 for us to get audience to your website. The failure was on your website. Um, so a conversion pixel is a little too advanced to talk about, but here you would create this cookie to track did people really follow through and go to the website at least? Did they go through the process to the checkout stage? And then, of course, payment. So this is a big topic, and some of you may be interested in it, and some of you not. And you can be viable on Facebook without using any paid content. But I can show you. I'll show you right here. I'll show you one of our clients. <coughs> the good news is that you get a residual residual results. You boost the post and it's it's still going to give you good results days after that, maybe even a week or so. So even if your money ran out, uh, it's still going to bring you customers. <coughs> All right, let's see here, likes. <coughs> Say reach. Okay, look at this. Once you have the insights, you're going to have these charts. Look at this big spike right here, and look at this bigger spike right here. What do you think that means? <coughs> Money. Paid. So organically, meaning a person that um, found your content without being paid to do so, uh, gave a like. Or, or whatever and then the dark one is paid that you paid and so without paying without paying uh, 1200 people were, were reached paying 5000 people were reached so over here and you see it goes on over How here usually on these we we only put about 20 to 50 dollars once a month and that um, that's for worked day? well or for, seven days or for the for the two, for the fourteen days. Oh, fourteen days. Like yes, yeah, spread that money out longer, um, because that seems to give you more of the residual. Look at how it happened in between here. There was all of this time when there was the boosted post, so we were getting a lot of paid views and such. Then after it ended, there was still the, this amount. Obviously, not in the thousands of range, but there was still an amount of people when there was no money being spent. And it and it's it's very it's variable. You know the algorithm always changes. Facebook improves things, changes things, and so forth. But here I'm showing that you definitely reach more people by paying it, and that's simply that they see it on another screen. Here I can see. Okay, they saw it. Did they click? Yeah, we can see over here somewhere the number of clicks and the number of likes and comments. And obviously the, the big jump up here is from paying, so 181 likes, as opposed to comments and all of that, shares. Question? How would you compare this to um, Google Ads? They're both very effective. They're both to, you know, to reach an, ad, an audience that's targeted. Um, I really cannot say which is better. It really depends on the audience, the audience you're trying to reach. They're both very effective. Usually for this client, however, we're running Facebook ads. Those seems to work better for this client. On another client, the, the Google ads might work better. That's why you want to have a shotgun approach in the beginning. Try a little bit of everything and then focus it uh, once you start to see what's more effective. What about some of these others like Pinterest and um, Instagram? Do they also have paid advertising? Uh, Instagram just enabled it like two weeks ago. So I have not looked at it enough to really see how effective it is, but it's going to be effective. Okay, so that would kind of be like a shotgun approach to if they're all paid, maybe try a little bit all. Yeah, hours. spend five dollars on each of them for a couple of weeks, see what happens. Then maybe start to increase your budget and that sort of thing. Yes. So I create my business Facebook, and then people start following it, or like uh -huh. it. They, they they have to click follow, and then every time I post. An article, they're going to get a notice that I posted something. 
Yeah, but remember, like I said, that unfortunately, even if you've got 100 follows or likes, not all 100 will see it. Not all 100 will see that notification anymore. This is where the, the boosting comes in into play. Yeah, for Google Plus, it's not like that at the moment. I don't know if it'll change. Maybe not, because Google Plus is part of the Google family, and they make plenty of money from search. So there's no way to, to make ads and boosts and such on Google Plus at the moment. There might not need to be, simply because they've got the deep pockets of the parent company. But Twitter has a way to do ads. Facebook, Pinterest. Uh, although for Pinterest, it's it's limited at the moment. It's kind of an kind of a beta testing at the moment. Eventually it'll be available to all of us, but we'll be able to do promoted pins on Pinterest. And then brand new on Instagram, that's coming. Um, so ads are, are coming for all these networks. Bad for the consumer, good for the company. Yes? Not quite but very related you can now buy something quickly from a pin but still if you want that pin to be seen by more people you still have to boost it or pay for it so the question earlier about what's the best time to to post well once you get your insights for example here at a glance let's see 34 33 33 33 so uh, so Sundays are the days that more people are active for this client and then on the times uh, I'm seeing here the biggest is 9 p.m. yeah 9 p.m. don't post anything at 3 in the morning <laughs> for this client your particular client might thrive at 3 in the morning because maybe time zone wise 3 in the morning is the middle of the day in their time so you're gonna get this. Hey, this looks like a little whale doesn't it? There's the tail and there's the head. But yours might look like a camel. I don't know. You're not going to see this until you have likes and, and follows and comments and all of that. And you can get them slowly but surely without paying, or you can get them a little faster by paying. So we see the same thing here. This one right here, and you can look up how much it costed, but it was probably $30. Maybe 7,000 people that had all of these likes and comments and such. Popularity breeds popularity. They then got us residual more likes. Well, great, a like is nice, but what, is it, what does it really mean? Well, we see from the owner, he can go to the cash register. Whenever we post something food-related, like a, a specific dish, we can go to the cash register and the owner can show us that meal sold more than last month because it's advertising, it's marketing, it's making people hungry, they want that meal, more people saw it, they buy it on the website or in the restaurant, so you get something tangible. Like that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon, it says five dollars, but it doesn't worth, it's not worth anything until you use it. All of these tweets and posts and such are not worth, worth anything until they um, until they create a, a, an action on your website, in your newsletter, in your store, and notice not all of them need to be boosted. You have some residual impact. This one over here that came after the boost got nearly a thousand and then it tapers off. So it's up to you to decide how much budget you want to use and for how long. Yes? Does Facebook send your profile page where they're putting it? The closest is, let me get back here, the closest is when you're actually boosting it, um, when you're boosting it, that preview on the right side, that's, that, that's the closest, you see. When you're doing it a boost this way, you have some limitation there. But, and I'm only going to touch on it briefly because you, everyone should read the article. If you go up to the <laughs> triangle of settings, manage ads, then now this is the power users ad manager. 
this is the one where you can get even more insight and detail about your ads at a glance. So in here, you will see that more in detail. On the previous one, it's sort of like the quick way to do it, the one with the least options so that you can just get something out there. This is the one that you're going to spend half an hour or more to craft it and create a whole campaign and then put it out there and get great results. The other one will get you good results too, but it's a little bit more like, you know, let's just do it, let's get it out there. That's why I'm, I'm letting you know about that article, because it's going to tell you. Go to this screen, and this screen, and this screen, and that's what this means, because it's, it's a long article. And that's up on the triangle there. Manage ads. So for example, this one reached 10000 for $25. One dollar, 176. Well, the result was just two likes, but that was one dollar. This one was 44. Yeah, there were likes, but then there were also other actions. They clicked on the post. They followed through. They went to the website. So there's a lot that we can still talk about this, but our time's just about to run out. Um, the biggest uh, thing that I can say about Facebook is that it, it is effective to, to, to pay. So notice this clearly says sponsor and create an ad. This is another way. If I want my content to appear there, that's part of the larger ad management system. If you go that way, you're going to see, would you like to get send people to my website? So there's these going to be these templates, which are more complex than what we were looking at boosting a moment ago. But you can go through here, and there's always a Help button. And here you'll, you'll see all of that. Again, choosing an audience, choosing a budget. What are the posts? How much am I going to spend on it per day for the whole campaign? Complex stuff. What does it look like? That takes a while to craft. That's why I talked about boosting, because it's basically create a post and then show it to more people. This is create a campaign. Uh, there was a button further down uh, that said preview, um, add preview. Is that the one? That they've created, or is, are they referring to some other? Ad this is the this is the ad that I'm creating. So based on a post that I've created, or that I've chosen, uh, this is how that's going to look as an ad. So how does it look like on the right column, right there? How does it look like on the mobile, etc. So last question. Okay, so this is uh, the larger world of Facebook ads and such. Um, you should explore it on your own. You can get started with as little as $1, and it is effective. You can set aside a budget of $20 a month. That's pretty viable. And you can start to reach more of an audience, because that's the double-edged sword of Facebook. It's a very uh, popular, famous, powerful network to reach a lot of people, but there's a lot of people on it. You're going to have to target yourself. And really the best way is through paying for it. And it's $1 as much as you want to, up to as much as you want to spend.